There's a relatively new concept in the information security industry called purple teaming. It's been around for a few years, but what exactly is it and what skills do you need to be a purple team member? We'll talk about that coming up. Hi, welcome to Simply Cyber, a channel dedicated to helping information security people get in the industry or level up their career. Today we're talking about purple teams. What exactly is a purple team and how do you get into being a purple teamer? To really understand this, we have to take a step back and talk about the history of purple teams. So purple teams are called purple because they're grown out of red and blue teams. So if you look at the kind of intersection of red and blue, you get purple and that's where that term came from. So let's just take a minute, not the point of this video today is talking about red and blue teams, but we have to understand what they are to really understand the purple team. So red team is, well, red and blue teams basically come from military lexicon of attackers and defenders when you're doing simulated exercises. Now the cybersecurity industry has basically adopted those and they're very common terms if you're not familiar with them. The red team is your offensive side. They're attackers. It's not just focused on penetration, but it could be exploit developers or um, you know just people who are good at sending fishes out or believable fishes and getting initial access uh, all the way to managing kind of a C2 infrastructure for command and control. Then you have the defensive side, the blue team. The blue team is uh, usually security operation type analyst, and they're watching the network, watching endpoints, protecting those systems, but not always exclusively security operations people. It can include people who do uh, forensics for, you know, kind of uh, a post-mortem to understand exactly what happened. It can be malware analysts who are breaking down code and trying to understand really what this piece of malware that got on an endpoint did. Uh, so th there's a various, uh, dimensions to red and blue team and I'll actually do separate videos on both of those and eventually when they're here there'll be a card right there. So let's talk about um, what how the purple team comes to engage. Now historically because red is attacking and blue is defending uh, there is a natural competitiveness and a natural adversarial element to that relationship. Basically red wants to get in pop shells, get access, take over systems, capture the crown jewels, whatever the engagement calls for, that's what the red team is trying to achieve. Now the blue team is you know, defending everything and they are trying to watch for these attacks coming in or identify indicators of compromise, see weird network traffic, et cetera, uh, detect basically, and you know, root out uh, the red team, whether it's uh, breaking off their persistence or outright just calling them on it. So traditionally the way these interactions happen, unless you work at a large organization like a Netflix, for example, um, that is constantly attacking their own systems internally to make sure that they're robust and resilient from uh, actual threat actors, uh, typically an organization would have a blue team protecting their assets, like that's permanent. Uh, you can outsource it, but it's common to see it in-house. And then you would contract out a you know offensive contracting group, a pen test team, a red team, uh, or whatever, depending on the level of complexity of your organization and needs. Now, typically they come in and they'll execute their red team engagement. Now, sometimes the blue team isn't even made aware that this is happening. Sometimes the blue team's made aware. Uh, sometimes the red team is actually given a bunch of uh, accounts already on the network or they're given a network diagram or what have you. Uh, it depends on how much money you want to spend, how much time you have, and what you're actually trying to get uh, out of the engagement. Typically, uh, pen test or red team, you're really trying to QA the effectiveness of A, your security controls at your organization, and B, um, the, the level of, I guess, efficacy of your blue team to be able to successfully detect certain attacks. Now, normally the red team will do their engagement, maybe they get the crown jewels, maybe they don't, whatever, uh, and then at the end, you know, they deliver a report, uh, and, you know, whatever the depth of that report is, maybe there's like a 30 minute out briefing uh, with the blue team or whatever, but they're just basically throw the report over the fence and the blue team's left with like, you know, here's a bunch of warts that you've got on your network or here's a bunch of um, issues that you professionally have that you guys didn't detect or whatever. Um, so it's not super effective and you know, the blue team will say, yeah, we know, and then go back to doing normal business ops and stuff like that. So this 
um, the adversity, A, and then B, the lack of um, success in delivering that report and then having the blue team do something with it is kind of what has led to this purple team to exist. Now, what is a purple team? The purple team is the combination of a red team member and a blue team member. Now, at its base level, it's a red team and blue team individual professional sitting next to each other and working. Now, more purple teams can be a little bit bigger and oftentimes you can actually um, contract out an organization that will help you bring in a purple team capability into your organization. But at its root analysis, here's what it is. The red team sits down with the blue team and says, okay, what are we gonna, you know, this is all worked out in advance, but what are we gonna test today? All right, we think we have good network segmentation, but we don't know. You know, we think the control is good. We bought this big product. We've trained our network engineers and our InfoSec team on how to, um, you know, protect it, manage it, and look for anomalies and such, but we don't know. All right, so the red team says, okay, or excuse me, the red team member of this purple team says, okay, I'm going to, sitting next to the blue team, I'm going to send these packets across the network and I'm gonna to attempt to access this resource or, or whatever the scenario is. And it can be lar larger, more engaging engagements. I'm just making a simple example here. Red team fires off. Now, blue team, what do you see? What are you seeing on the network? Did any of your alerts pop? Did, did an alert you would expect pop pop? Um, did you, did, did it actually prevent me from even trying to transmit the packets and stuff? Now, hopefully the offensive member of this team has already done the research and has an idea on how to kind of circumvent the control. Um, because if the protect part's in place, that's good. But what you're trying to do is also detect if the blue team's uh, depth of controls will prevent it from successfully attacking or um, ac you know, accessing the resource or what have you. So at its, at its base, what I'm trying to say is the red team and blue team sit together and they basically have this kind of uh, very pointed, very uh, informative back and forth of I'm doing this, do you see that? I'm doing this, did it stop that? What, what do you see and what do you see? And they kind of work through whatever the engagement calls for. Now, this leads to a couple things. One, the two members see themselves as a team instead of adversaries. So now already you've got kind of a cultural difference in what the attitude is and the culture of the team. It's not an us versus them. It's an us helping the organization. Uh, and B, you don't get this report dump at the end that may or may not be well documented and may or may not be read and may or may, uh, may, or may not have action taken on it. You have a real time feedback loop that can, you know, action can be taken in real time. And because it's really pointed, you know, the blue team member would be more, you know, focused, I guess is the right way to say, to address those issues. Now, a couple things. One, with a purple team, um, it's a little bit slower. So some organizations, especially with cyber being a cost center, uh, some organizations don't have the appetite financially or from leadership to want a purple team because it's a little bit slower, right? Because you're slowly working through pointed situations in a campaign versus just a red team blowing out everything and throwing it to the blue team. It, on paper, it doesn't look as good a value, but from a cybersecurity perspective and information security perspective, it adds a lot of value and it really introduces security uh, to your organization, which is great, right? That's what we're doing here. That's the whole point. What skills would you need to be a purple team member? Now, I did some research on this. I talked to Mick Douglas uh, over at InfoSec Innovations and got his feedback. Now, his company actually runs Purple Team Engagements. And I asked him a couple things. What skills would you really need? And B, what, you know, what level is this appropriate for? Are we talking entry level? Or are we talking senior level people only? <laughs> and Mick told me, it's not really about seniority. It's about your ability, A, to think creatively, outside the box, think of different solutions, and then B, really understanding um, information technology kind of techniques, right? So it used to be four, five, six years ago, it was about understanding tools. What kind of tools are the bad guys using or the threat actors, right? Now it's about techniques. And Mick pointed this out and it's really good. It, you can really see this in the way that living off the land has become really the de facto uh, attack 
technique or you know for different levels of compromise and management and going undetected that threat actors have adopted now living off the land if you're not familiar with that technique is instead of using custom tools that a lot of tools are actually looking for and will pop on Threat actors will take advantage of tools that are already in the environment that are authorized to be there. WMI is one, uh, PowerShell is another one. Um, there's just all sorts of tools that administrators use to manage an environment that threat actors can use to also manage the environment, which is what you don't want, right? You don't want threat actors managing the environment. Now, really quick, if you're enjoying this content, just take a second and click that thumbs up button. I'd really, really appreciate it. And if you actually really want more of this content as I pump it out, uh, just hit the subscribe button below and you'll be made aware as I uh, put, put these videos out. Techniques is something that you'll have to know. And what does that manifest as? So an example that Mick provided me was in a great one is uh, DNS tunneling. So if you, DNS tunneling is basically uh, communicating out across a DNS channel. Uh, to effectively either data exfil or do C2 type uh, stuff. Now, if you don't really understand what normal DNS traffic looks like, uh, you may not catch that or a tool may not catch that or whatever. Uh, but if you know what DNS traffic looks like, uh, DNS tunneling is actually, it, it really stands out uh, on a network um, or a PCAP. So understanding what techniques the threat actors are using and then what you know kind of protocol traffic looks like in general what normal traffic looks like if you will uh, will help you a long way in understanding what abnormal traffic looks like now as far as jumping in purple team while you can get in kind of as an entry-level individual um, you know personally I think based on what my research is showing and what I've learned is you know if you're coming from a blue or a red team uh, background, then obviously you're well suited for purple team because you're already kind of got half of the skill set uh, required to kind of be in that. But with blue teaming and red teaming, like I said, really thinking creatively um, from the blue team side, you know, you, you got to start thinking uh, pur um, purple. You really got to start thinking red team side. So what are you used to seeing? And then how could you think of ways where you might have gaps that you could actually uh, execute an attack to detect whether or not you would even effectively see that attack or perhaps you have another control in the environment that could help see that. Now if you're not seeing it then you can start writing rules or definitions or um, um, uh, tune your sim or whatever in order to start detecting that right. Now if you're the red team side the pen testing side um, you're definitely going to be in a good position because you're going to be executing the attacks um, with the blue team member under this purple team context but you really need to think about, okay, very pointed, right? Like it, it's really cool to just sit down and, you know, crack on the keyboard and hack and pop a shell or whatever, but really be deliberate and think through what the attack would be and how the blue team would or wouldn't see it. It's easy to think about how to kind of um, worm, worm around or whatever and, and actually get where you want, but think about what control would stop you or prevent you from getting there and then talk with the blue team member about you know these are the controls that would probably stop this or this is a rule you might want to look for or whatever and then collaborate 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 that's really at its essence what a purple team is it's collaboration uh, for effective increase and an effective improvement of your security controls at the organization. So if you want to get more information on Purple Teams, uh, I did a lot of research myself. There's a couple great talks. I'm going to link to them below in the description. But John Strand from Black Hills has done a couple talks. Uh, he actually has a great talk on uh, the one I'll link to on how Purple Teams can be used effectively for an organization and really how to use the MITRE ATT&CK framework. And if you're not familiar with this, uh, I'll also put a link below, but I'll do a whole other uh, presentation on MITRE ATT&CK. And it, but it basically gives a common lexicon for a red team and a blue team to effectively talk about the full scope of where attacks can happen and um, you know allows for an organization to actually see if they're adding if they're investing in defensive controls that they already have in place um, but that that's for a separate talk but John Tran's talk is excellent also uh, there's a talk that MITRE did at ZEFCON uh, I'll link to that below on 
uh, Purple Team and kind of the evolution of it. And then Maddie Stone just recently keynoted at B-Sides Charleston on Purple Teaming. And her, her definition of Purple Team and the way she approaches it is a little bit different than what the traditional Purple Team is that I'm talking about right here. Maddie's is more about someone who was Blue Team going to Red Team and then applying their knowledge of Blue Team skill sets uh, to being a more effective red teamer and vice versa. So uh, I'll link to her talk below. Definitely interesting. A, a little uh, variation on what the purple team is more traditionally that I've uh, talking about here. Uh, but I think purple teams in general are an excellent development in the information security industry. I love that they're giving real-time feedback. If you're looking for a job in purple teaming, um, I, I'm not really seeing a lot of jobs posted where they're looking for purple teams uh, necessarily. You'll see red and blue, but it's not really called that. Uh, there'll be like security operations analyst or, uh, I mean, that's really a common one that you can pull up. For red team, it's more penetration tester or ethical hacker, uh, these type of things. And again, those are more outsourced services. So you'd almost want to look for a kind of a consulting firm that specializes in that or offers that service line of um, services. Question of the day, are you a red team or a blue team or already and have experienced kind of this adversarial relationship? Do you think a purple team would help based on uh, what I've been saying and kind of what the promises of the purple team? Put your comments below and answer it and let me know. I'd love to talk about it with you. So that wraps it up today. Basically, we covered what purple teams are, what skills you might need to get into there, and additional resources if you wanted to get more information on purple teaming. Thanks, and until next time, stay secure.